Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules 153 here with another Dreams Logic tutorial. Today we'll be going over the score gadget, the score modifier gadget, how to put scoreboards in your dreams, and the different kinds of scoreboards that you can have. The score and the score modifier gadgets are basically the same as the variable and the variable modifier in the way that they work. We'll go through a few examples of how you might implement this in your game. You can see in this first example here that we've got our timer turning on the score modifier once every second. Our score modifier is set to add one to the score one score. For this next setup, the top score modifier is set to do the same thing as our first setup, so it's going to add one to our score once every second, and the score modifier down the bottom is on the set setting and the value is set to 5. So every time this score modifier turns on, it's going to set our score back to 5, as you can see. We can also set the score modifier to update continuously, rather than just once when it's powered on, by changing the update type setting. You can see that this score is updating with the value on the slider down the bottom every time the logic updates, so it'll update the score 30 times per second. The score modifiers also have a get function to get the score. So you can put one of these down rather than having to run a wire directly from the main score gadget. You can see this score modifier is set to get and it's plugged into the number displayer which is displaying our score. We might also want to have a timed score. For this, we can get a timer out and open up the tweak menu. We can set the target time to something huge then we can plug our current time directly into the score modifier's slider down the bottom. Just make sure your wire blend is set to overwrite by shift selecting the input tab that pops out on the tweak menu. The modifier needs to also be set to update continuously. Our score gadget also has some outputs that we can use. I've just got a little setup here to increase then decrease the score intermittently. You can see that our current score output is plugged into the number displayer and is showing our score. We've then got the score increased output going into the green node and the score decreased output going into the red node. This way the cube will flash green when the score increases and red when it decreases. We've also got a multiplayer toggle here which we'll go through in just a moment. And there's a post score input as well, which will post the score to the scoreboard on the front of the dream cover. Just so we're all on the same page, this is a scoreboard and you can have multiple pages or tabs of scores. There's some rules that you'll need to follow and some info that you'll need to know about these to get them to work, so we'll go through that now. First of all, you can have as many scores posted per scene as you like. So you can have a single scene and be keeping track of the time the player has taken to complete the level, as well as how many items they've collected on two separate scoreboards. One for the time and one for the amount of items. The maximum score that the score gadget is capable of is 9,999,999. The next rule is that the scene with the score gadget must be posted within a dream, or you won't ever get the scoreboard option. To put it in a dream, you just go to start fresh, then all the way to the right is the dream option, where you can import your existing scenes. The dream also has to be posted online, or the scoreboard button won't show up. You can post the dream as unlisted, so that others won't see it, just to test your scoreboards before you release the dream. If, if for some reason your scoreboard isn't showing up, just make sure that you've definitely posted it online. If we go into the scoreboard button here, we can change the settings of the scoreboard with the pencil button up the top right. We can change the units to become a number or a time. If you were using the time setup like I showed in the example before with the timer, you'd switch it to the timed option. You can sort the scoreboard too, so if you had a game where the shortest time was the winner, you'd change this to lower. Changing the multiplayer boards option will reset the scores, just so that you know. If you have a single score gadget in a scene that has multiple players, the score will show up under different tabs under this button here. If you want them all to show up under the one scoreboard, rather than under these tabs, you'd select the combined option. An important tip with the post score input is that you must pulse it when you want to post the score, and you can't have it continually turned on. You can pulse it as much as you want, 
but if you've got a score that updates frequently, it might get annoying for the player if they're getting notified every second that their score improved, so it's best to only post the score when you need to. So when the player finishes a level, for example. Now we'll go through how you'd make a multiplayer scoreboard for if you've got players competing against each other. With this setup here, we've got the score multiplayer toggle turned on. We've got some player scores here, numbered 1 through 4, and these are going into a combiner. Our score modifier is capable of taking player information, so it can keep track of each player's individual score. Our combiner is set to the player info setting, and we've just got each of our individual player's scores plugged into their respective ports on the combiner. This combiner is then plugged directly into our score modifier's operation value slider. You can see that we've got our current score output from this score going into a splitter, which splits it back into its individual player information. So this single score is holding four separate values, one for each player. When we toggle the post score input, if we have four players, it'll post four separate scores to our scoreboard. If we wanted to update a single player's score, we can set the score modifier to add and it only connects one of the player input ports. If we plug a pulsing timer into the player two port, it'll just update the second player's score. We've got a grab sensor on this block hooked up to the post score input, so it'll post the score whenever we grab the block. I've got this going into a calculator set to greater than zero here, but I'll explain why that is in just a moment. If we jump into play mode and then set our scores, and then grab this block, you can see that when we post the score, we'll get notified that we've beaten our previous score. This won't show up for the first time that you get a score though. For this example, let's say we only want a specific player's score to be posted if they complete the level. With a lot of the green gadgets, such as the grab sensor and the trigger zone, you can plug them into splitters and get the individual player information that our score modifier is able to interpret. You can see that our grab sensor splits into the separate player info outputs when we plug it into a splitter. So if we plug our grab sensor directly into the post score input, it will only post the score of the person who grabbed the object, or the player who entered the trigger zone, for example. If you want to post all of the player's scores at once, you plug the player information output from the gadget that you're using into a calculator set to greater than zero, so it just turns it into an on-off. This way the score modifier won't know who's grabbed the block, and it'll post all of the scores. If we grab this dark green cube with the grab sensor plugged directly into the post score input, you can see that it only updates my score. But if we grab the lighter green cube, it'll post both of the scores because that grab sensor is plugged into the greater than calculator. For the final example, we'll go through a combined multiplayer score where the players are working together. For this, you'll want to have the multiplayer toggle turned off. If there's more than one player in a scene with a score modifier that isn't set to multiplayer, the score will show up under the separate 1, 2, 3, and 4 player tabs. I think that's just about everything for the scoreboards, guys. Hopefully this covers all of the scenarios and helps you with your scoreboards in your own dreams. That's all for this one, and I'll see you on the next one.